Hello, in this video I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to configure your tripod in an equatorial alignment configuration. I'm going to first show a very short presentation uh, to summarize all the steps. If uh, that's enough, then you can uh, stop there and go have some fun. Otherwise, keep watching and I'll go into each step in much more detail. Okay, the first thing to do is get the wedge plate set to your latitude. Um, you could go in a different order. You could get your tripod leveled, then bring this up while you're outside getting ready to view. But I like to set this up in the house because it's easy to level a tripod in the house on the floor. I like to get this set up and I'll keep it at the right setting between viewings and not, not change it. So inside the house I go ahead and level this up I get a bubble level I put the bubble level on there then the next thing to do is to twist this that way that adjusts like that there are markings on here for different degrees but there's no clear alignment mark here so it's kind of just a rough gauge so I go roughly to 40 degrees don't do it really tight, but just snug it up. Again, I get my uh, level, iPhone level. You put it on there. Well, that's pretty good. It's already 41 degrees. But I would fine tune it and get it exactly at 40 degrees. Now with my wedge adjusted appropriately, I mount, again, I do this in the house. I mount the telescope onto the wedge that this is kind of heavy so that's kind of hard I take the entire unit outside um, now I, I just now realize that I'm assuming that you're home and you can easily get this out of the house altogether um, if you're in the car and going out into a field uh, the order at which you're doing this I guess will have to be adjusted so you'll have to account for that right now I'm describing backyard viewing so put this on here, it's on the wedge, the wedge is uh, at 40 degrees, it's aligned right where I need it to be, it's nice and tight. I bring this out uh, on my back patio, and the first thing I have to do is point this north. Pointing the tripod north means the wedge hinge part, not the open part, points to the north. Uh, it may sound like an easy enough thing to do, but just to check, I get my compass on an iPhone, I can put it on there, square it up, and then to get it right at north I can just twist it left to right or clockwise and counterclockwise. Then to get the whole unit level, it's kind of tough. Uh, there are no fine adjustments on the legs. There's just adjustments for making the legs longer and shorter but they're not something that you can adjust the length with a fine turn of a screw. So often you're looking down or paying attention to the ground while you're trying to get this level. That makes using this bubble level kind of hard. This bubble level that comes with it is supposed to go right there, right in the center, but that little bubble is really hard to see, especially with the unit up here in the dark, down trying to adjust the legs. So what I've done is I've got a bubble level again for my iPhone. It has a sound option. You can hear that when you're not level, there's various beeps. It's level right now and it emits that constant tone. That means you're level. So I can be looking down and hear when I'm level. Okay. So now it's pointing north, this is level, it's at the right angle, this is mounted, and the next thing to do is get your handset. We're going to go to the menu options, and I'll run through the menu options in the next section. Okay, I've set the camera up so that we can see the menu system, uh, but as a review, the, the uh, pretend that the 
scope is on your tripod. Your tripod is level. It's set at 40 degrees or whatever your uh, angle should be. Your tripod's pointing north and you're ready to go. So I turn on, initializes. The first prompt you get is basically to hit enter again, and you have to decide what you're doing. How are you aligning your telescope? Uh, I'm going to press down until I see. I'm going to do the equatorial north alignment. I'm in North America, so hit enter. The uh, date and time entrance is uh, common for all the alignments. So I'm just going to go through that really quick. Time, location, date. Okay. Now we've selected that we want to do the equatorial, but now we have to decide what method of equatorial alignment are we going to do. We're going to do the auto align. The equatorial auto align is when you line the two marks that are on top together. Um, I wasn't very successful at that, so hit down. There's the two star and the one star. Um, those will be the ones I try next. Uh, I, I just, when I tried it first, it just wasn't that successful. Um, but this worked well for me, solar system alignment. I believe the reason this was really good is because I can always pick out Jupiter even when the viewing's bad and the fact that uh, I'm just beginning, uh, I can still pick out Jupiter. Uh, that's pretty easy. So I'm going to select solar system alignment. Your next question is which uh, solar system object? It picked Mars. Uh, I just have this on my desk. That's assumably uh, it thinks that's the best choice. But I'm going to go Jupiter because that's always very visible. I hit enter. Okay. So this is common to all alignments. You first slew uh, and get it centered in your scope. Okay. This is just pretend. Uh, hit enter. Now you align it in the eyepiece for the fine alignment. Yeah. And then when you're ready, oh, I'm sorry, hit align. And it's now it's aligned and it's tracking and it'll uh, equatorially trace out in a It'll trace an arc across the sky, the same arc that Jupiter is tracing when it uh, goes from rise to set. And uh, there you go. In, in upcoming videos, I will try uh, the star alignment because I think it's more accurate. This does work, but after a few minutes, I do notice I have to adjust. Um, uh, and the adjusting is pretty easy, actually. You just go undo, hit the align button go down until you get sync. When you say sync, it'll sync up with an object that you point at, so I hit enter. And I'm going to sync it back up with Jupiter. Really all that means is if it's drifted away from the center of the eyepiece, then now I can sync it back up, uh, physically align it with the center. Pretend now that's nice and, and centered up and hit enter and align. I hope that's uh I hope that's useful.